Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Alicia and I'm the owner of Alicia Be Creative. Today's tutorial is all about rhinestones and not just how to rhinestone, but we're actually going to be talking about and discussing three different glues that I've been using and giving you kind of my pros, cons, and what to expect with each of these adhesives for rhinestones. So of course, everything I use in today's tutorial will be listed and linked down in the description box down below. And you can even find some discount codes down there as well to save you a little bit of extra money. But let's go ahead and jump right into today's tutorial. Okay, so to start today's tutorial, we are going to start with some wine tumblers. So these are wine tumblers, stainless steel ones from Hog Tumblers, and they'll be listed down in the description box down below. So we're doing three wine tumblers with rhinestones today, and we'll be using three different glues in order to complete the entire project of each. So we're going to prep these tumblers just like we would if we were going to be doing a regular glittered and epoxy type tumbler. But the one thing I am going to do before I do the sanding process that I normally would do is I am going to put a little bit of some electrical tape around the bottom edge. And this is going to help me sort of keep that bottom edge sort of stainless steel, but also help me to create a really straight line of rhinestones down towards the bottom of the cup. Now, it's completely up to you how far down you want your rhinestones to go. I didn't want them to go too far close to the bottom. That way, when I'm putting the rhinestone or the cup down that I'm not bumping off any rhinestones. So I did probably about a quarter inch from the bottom. And so I just wrapped that electrical tape around and then I just used my little cup edging tool in order to make sure that I had a nice straight line. I then of course did sanding, which I didn't show you just because that's typical of my prep process. And I put a little bit of painter's tape on the bottom of the cup so that I didn't get any overspray on that section. We're now in our spray tent and I'm I'm going to go ahead and spray paint these. The first cup is going to be spray painted candy pink from Rustoleum. And then my second cup is going to be like this cash green from Color Shot. We're going to spray paint this cup green for the base of our cup. And then the third cup is going to be like a gloss purple, like sort of like a deep purple look. So often I get questions on how do you decide sort of what color to base paint your cups and really that's dependent on you. I've seen a lot of people do no base paint and just go directly over stainless steel with doing rhinestone tumblers. I've seen others, you know, base paint it based on the color that is the majority of their uh, pattern or template, whatever they're kind of using as their uh, rhinestones. And so it really is up to you. I chose these three colors based on the fact of I thought that they would match the best with the rhinestone scatter mixes that I'm going to be using today. So that was really just how I decided what color would be best. So for this rhinestone cup right here, we're going to be using Dawn Court, which is a pink and gold mix. We're also going to be using Spring Court on the green and night core on the purple. So I just showed you kind of all of those mixes. And of course, you guys know that these are all from Flint Sister Supply Shop. And so you can find those scatter mixes in her shop and you can save 10% with my code down in the description box. So now that my cups are dry, the very first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to do the top rim of each of my cups. So I'm going to use liquid fusion for this just because I am able to put my liquid fusion in a syringe and it just makes it easier to be able to control the amount of glue I am squirting out to put my rhinestones around the top edge. Plus liquid fusion does, does dry rather quickly. So I just decided that I would use this glue for all of the top and bottom rims of each of the three rhinestone cups. So when you are establishing your line of rhinestones on the top, I'm going to be doing scatter method, which is my favorite rhinestone pattern to use when I am rhinestoning or blinging items. And so what scatter method is, of course, is just having various sizes of stones and just applying them randomly, sort of in that Tetris style um, pattern, finding stones to fit in those small crevices. But it's also important to know that gaps are inevitable when you're doing a rhinestone pattern. The goal here is just trying to minimize the amount of 
uh, gaps you have by having those smaller stones. So the scatter mixes for and from Flynn Sister Supply Shop, they go from size SS threes all the way up to SS30. So it's a really great range of sizes and stones in order to be able to accomplish um, scatter patterned uh, rhinestone work like blinging on whatever project or whatever surface you're going to be blinging on so i really love these scatter packs because it kind of takes the guesswork out of everything and it really does allow me to just be able to take these scatter mixes and just kind of apply my glue and then get to stoning now that I've established though my top line of rhinestones, I'm going to take my sort of weeding tool here and just the edge of that and push all of my rhinestones flat with my cup on the table. This is going to make sure that my glue uh, dries with the rhinestones in a nice straight line and that I don't have any overlapping over that top edge. So that I'm gonna let sit aside and let that glue really sit and dry completely until it's hard. And then we're gonna go ahead and move on to the cash green colored cup and we're gonna establish the bottom row of stones. So you don't have to do your bottom row when you're doing your top row. For me though, sometimes it's easier to do it this way to just establish those two rows because I do like to let these um, straight lines and edges, I like to let them dry for at least 24 hours before I continue stoning my project. And so I like to just do the top and bottom, especially if it's going to be a scatter method cup anyway, um, and just be able to sort of get those out of the way and not have to worry about having to come back to do the bottom row later. So again, we're just doing that thin line of glue out of my syringe here, and we're just going to add those stones. When you're establishing that rim and that line of rhinestones, because this is scatter method, it doesn't matter what size stone I'm putting next to each other. The goal here is just trying to make sure that this is as straight as possible. So for the bottom edge, I can't really flip this cup down and push the stones down, but I do end up going back around with my picker tool and just pushing up any stones that might be a little bit misaligned. So we'll let that set aside and then I did the exact same thing with the final cup. I established the top rim and bottom rim of rhinestones with all three cups before I get into applying my decals. So these are the three decals we're going to be applying to these cups. So this is like a trio of cups that I am going to be gifting to my mom. And so um, tumblers of these sizes often are used for not just wine, but also like coffee and tea and just kind of those daily drinks. So I did just kind of like this cute breakfast wine, lunch wine, and dinner wine for my mom to replace some of the cups that are starting to have some of that wear and tear uh, because she's had them for quite a while and uses them often. So so I'm going to just apply my my images here to my cup, my SVGs here, and I did just create these in Cricut Design Space. I didn't feel like this was something maybe that was necessary to show you guys, but I do have a video for that if you do want to see the process. It was just kind of slicing the two words together so they were a little bit smushed here, but you did note that I did sand my vinyl after I did weed them, and that is so that I have that scuffed up surface, of course, to be able to stone over. So this little cute caddy I got from the Dollar Tree, believe it or not, and I absolutely love it because it keeps all of my rhinestone items together. I tend to have quite a bit of things kind of all over the place, and when I'm stoning, that makes me crazy when I have so many things kind of all over my table. So I really love this cute little caddy because I'm able to keep everything together that I need for rhinestoning and be able to just grab that and move it around the house if I don't feel like just rhinestoning in my craft space. So on this cup, you'll notice that I've already done the work and the stoning on the wording and the vinyl, but I'm gonna show you really quickly just how to rhinestone in between the words and around the words. That's kind of where I like to start if I'm going to be adding a name or adding any sort of wording to a rhinestone tumbler. And the glue we're using today, or the glue we're using for this cup is we're gonna be using Gem Tech. So GemTac is a glue that I have been using for quite a bit of time. You guys have probably seen it in a couple other tutorials already up until now. And so GemTac, you can find it at, I believe I picked this bottle up at uh, Michael's, I want to say, but I know you can also find it at Hobby Lobby as well. But GemTac is a rhinestone adhesive that you can use on your rhinestoning projects. 
And so this is a white glue base. So you guys are familiar with me using sort of a clear glue base. And so this is a white glue. And although it is a white glue, it does dry clear very much like Mod Podge. You know, it goes on white, but it does dry clear. And what I do like about GemTac is I am able to put GemTac in the little precision bottles that I've had for quite some time. And it does really easily come out of those without giving me a hand cramp like it does when I try and add liquid fusion to these little precision bottles. So I really do love that. The cure time on GemTac is 24 hours, much like the other glues that I'm going to be using today. So the full cure time is 24 hours. The only thing about GemTac that's a little bit different than the other glues that I'm using and are going to be showing you that I use today is that when you do wash your cup, you will notice that the glue sort of comes back to being white before it goes back to being clear. So when you wash your cup, don't be alarmed if all of a sudden the glue in between the stones appears white again. Once your cup has fully dried again after you've done the washing, washing process, it will go back to clear. So just don't be alarmed when that does happen if you choose to use this glue. But I do find this to be a really easy to use glue. It was pretty inexpensive as well, very similar to the same price I typically pay for my liquid fusion off of Amazon. But of course, it was something that I was very easily to just able to go into the craft store and grab and not have have to wait for Amazon to deliver it to me. So that was definitely a plus. Again, a really simple and easy glue to use. Again, the dry time is the 24 hours, much like liquid fusion. It's fast drying. I did have probably a few minutes of work time. I would say compared to liquid fusion, which I'm going to show you guys I'm using in the next cup we're going to be doing. I did find that this glue stayed tacky a little bit longer, but it still was rather fast drying. So I didn't do very large sections of glue. I did smaller sections so that I didn't have to rush through applying my stones. Um, just to make sure that the glue didn't end up drying on me before I got to those kind of farther out sections. Again, this is a one part glue as well. So literally you just squeeze it out of the bottle and go. Uh, very easy to just be able to spread that on with the precision tip as well. So we're just going to continue this process with the stoning pattern. And again, with scatter method it's just random stones placed and so i just go back and forth and kind of just place stones where i find that they fit the best i also do like with gem tack is that i don't have a lot of sliding so i am going to show you one of the glues and so if you've ever been rhinestoning a project sometimes if you move really quickly and you kind of move from one section to the other you'll come back to where you started and notice that some of your stones have kind of become displaced and you have to push them back to where they were up against flushed up against the other stones that was something that there wasn't a whole lot of sliding there definitely still was some sliding especially in some of the fresher glue spots if i then moved across the tumbler um, into other sections uh, some of the stones would slide a little bit not too much that it was annoying I would say but there is a little bit of slide that you have to be mindful of to make sure you are familiar with that and being able to go back to push your stones up against the stones they were flushed up against so that cup is done and we're going to get into our second cup here which we are putting spring core scatter mix on here from Flint's sister supply shop again and we're going to be using liquid fusion. So you guys have seen me use liquid fusion in the past. This is something that's not new. It's actually one of the first glues I ever used for rhinestoning. And I still very much do love liquid fusion. So some of the things that's great about liquid fusion is just like GemTac, it is the 24 hour cure time, which is great. Meaning I don't have to wait a whole lot of time for my cup to cure before I can go ahead and wash it. And then of course, get it off to the customer. I love that this glue is a little bit thicker, so I do feel like I'm able to, you know, a little bit of glue, I would say, goes a long way. Again, I want to make sure my glue is not too thin, but I do like that Liquid Fusion is a bit thicker than GemTac, which much more resembles like a Mod Podge formula thickness to me. Um, Liquid Fusion is a bit thicker thicker and so I do feel like the bottle of liquid fusion goes a little bit farther than I think the gem tack bottle will. Now I haven't finished both bottles um, but I'll certainly let you know if I feel like I'm able to get more projects done out of one glue versus the other. 
The other thing with liquid fusion is that it is fast drying, so you do have to be mindful because it will dry quickly on you. And so sometimes I do catch myself applying a little bit too much glue or too wide of a section to try and rhinestone. I definitely recommend sticking to smaller sections when you're using liquid fusion because it does dry rather quick, which is great, but not great when you're trying to move quickly through your rhinestone project. So definitely working in smaller sections is best when using your liquid fusion. The only bummer about liquid fusion, and I have talked about this before, is that with liquid fusion, it's very hard to find precision tip bottles that will allow this glue because it's thicker to pass through the needle. So you do need like a wider gauge needle in order to use it in like a precision tip bottle. I would recommend honestly the syringes, the blunt end edge syringes that I like to use for applying your glue or how I'm applying it here, which is just putting a little bit on a sticky note and just using a paintbrush that I can discard later or put in some alcohol to kind of get all those glue remnants off. So those are kind of my two, the only issue I really find with liquid fusion. I do love the hold when it comes to liquid fusion, so it's always a favorite in my book. So before we get into the third glue that I'm going to be talking about, I did want to come back and kind of backtrack a little bit and show you guys again the process of me applying rhinestones to the decal on the cup. So of course I've already sanded the decal to ensure that we get a really good grip and hold with our glue and rhinestones and I did end up using gem tack to apply my stones on the decal simply because that precision tip really does come in handy with these really fine line work within this SVG. So it was a little bit difficult to try and use the other two glues across the SVG on here so I just opted to use the gem tack since it already was in the precision tip bottle to just make my life a little bit easier. But when you are applying rhinestones to a decal, you want to make sure that you take the opportunity before you start rhinestoning to kind of dry fit your stones on your SVG or on your line work. And what dry fitting is, is when you take a rhinestone with your wax pencil and you just apply it to the the decal just to see the sizing that way you can really decide before you commit to adding glue which stones are going to go in which sections for this kind of font i used a lot of the smaller stones for the word dinner on here because it was a lot of fine work and when i'm fitting my stones onto my decal i'm making sure that my stone is going to fit perfectly inside the line work and not too far over the edges because that is going to kind of distort your lettering and not make it very clear to be able to read exactly. So those are kind of my tips and the rhinestones that I'm using for this specifically is I'm using the uh, black scatter mix from Flynn Sister Supply Shop. For the other two cups, I did just a crystal scatter mix from Flynn Sister Supply Shop, which just was um, another scatter pack. But again, it's of one solid color versus the um, mixes, which have multiple colors and multiple sizes. So now we're gonna work onto the bottom section here. And for this, I was able to use like SS20s with some of the smaller size stones as well. Again, the scatter packs go from SS3 all the way up to SS30. So you have a wide range of stones to be able to play with and fit in sort of your smaller SVG work um, and on your decals. So I do love using a scatter mix even if I'm going to make the rest of the cup a honeycomb pattern, I do love to just grab a scatter mix instead of having to grab a bunch of different sizes of stones um, when it comes to being able to apply rhinestones to a decal applied to the cup. So we're going to just kind of speed through this a little bit, but I did want to spend a little time just kind of talking about this process here. It takes me anywhere for from 30 minutes to an hour just to get the decal work done. And that is because I want to take my time. I want to make sure that when I stand my cup back that I very much am able to still read the word entirely and that it doesn't kind of disappear when um, when I look at it from afar. The one thing I did know and wish that I would have paid better attention to is with my breakfast wine one which uses Dawn Court which is like a an opal pink 
and gold mix, the crystal scatter stones did kind of blend in a little bit to the background. So in hindsight, I do wish that I would have chosen a darker scatter pack mix to use for that decal work. But all in all, it's still able to be read. It's just a little bit, a little less easy to read than the other two, I would say. So for the rest of this cup though, the we are going to be using Bob Smith's epoxy. This is the 30 minute formula. And so with this epoxy or with this uh, adhesive, it is a two part mix, okay? So you have to squirt out equal parts of part A and part B, very similar to how you would use, you know, typical epoxy. And I do recommend, because this is an epoxy base, that you do either work in a well-ventilated room or wear your proper PPE as far as the face mask goes, so you're not breathing in those fumes. I mix a very small amount at a time because a little bit really does go a long way with this glue and I have up to 30 minutes to work with so I don't have to worry about rushing through the process and having my glue dry on me before I get to that next section. So that is one thing I do really enjoy about Bob Smith Epoxy is that because it's the 30 minute version and there are other versions there's one hour and i believe 15 minutes is the other two sort of formulas that is out for this um two-part rhinestone adhesive mix um i like the 30 minute because it's like the perfect amount of time that i need to work in kind of larger or wider sections and so that is something that i do love with Bob Smith's, it is again that 24 hour cure time. So all of the glues that I talked about today, all are fully cured within 24 hours, which is great, especially if maybe you're in a little bit of a crunch, needing to get a rhinestone tumbler out to someone. Um, I love that it is a quicker turnaround for waiting for the last stone to be applied, even over an epoxy tumbler, which typically you should wait to give to a customer, not until after three days. Being able to wash and hand a rhinestone tumbler to a customer after 24 hours really does cut down, of course, on the amount of time you have to hold the item before you can gift it or give it to your customer. The other thing about Bob Smith epoxy, it is clear so you don't have to worry about it, you know, <clears throat> being a colored glue that you're going to be able to see. It does dry clear. It is fast drying. So even though you do have 30 minutes of working time, it really does dry very quickly. Again, I love that 30 minute working time. The other thing though about Bob Smith's that can be a little bit frustrating and probably why I'm starting to enjoy working with Bob Smith's, but it was very frustrating for me in the beginning, is that this glue does have a lot of slip and slide. So you do have to be careful, which is why I try and work in like precise sections so I'm not jostling my cup around because when that glue is fresh on your, you know, your cup, when you start to jostle your cup around, your stones are going to slide. <clears throat> and so when I first started using this glue, I found myself going back and forth, having to push stones back flush up against the other stones because of that. So I like to work kind of in small, smaller sections in the same section. So this would be for me, I don't think a really great glue to use if I'm going to be doing like a honeycomb because I like to go row by row. And I think I would get really frustrated to be working on a cup with Bob Smith and going row by row and having to go back over and over to push the stones back up against the stone above it. So that would be the only thing. I do recommend this for like flat surface projects would be no problem because of course you don't have to worry about as much slide. Projects like scatter method I think work well but I do find that if I'm going to be doing honeycomb um, that it is a little bit tricky because I do get annoyed with the amount of sliding that happens if I'm moving around the tumbler, you know, concisely. So after this last one, that was it. So of course, I'm going to show you guys in another tutorial kind of the, the cleanup process and just show you those glues um, in its final form. But these are going to cure for 24 hours and that was kind of it. I didn't do a whole lot of showing you the whole cup because you guys have seen rhinestone tutorials before. But if you have questions, definitely be sure to leave those down in the comment section down below. And you guys know that I will have another video out for you again soon. Bye!